This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Sonoran Heat, the Smoked Two Border, and the Discord. Can't go wrong with any of those great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While you're over there, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mackinney Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, veteran-owned, world-class, hand-roasted, micro-batch coffee company. Every single order is made is roasted right when you order it. Maybe not right when you order it, but definitely not before. Point is, is that it's not stale. It's not sitting around in a warehouse. It's not sitting around on a store shelf. It's not sitting around just slowly losing that fresh roasted flavor. It is all roasted when you order it and not before. Uh, Because this is a company that does everything from an integrity standpoint, doing all of the things right, which means the beans are also fair trade and USDA organic certified. That's why the coffee is so good, aside from the fact that it's also the right way to do it. So you can find some coffee of your very own huge selection over there, but you can find your very own new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. You, you're not going by Greg Oden anymore, Duke Zach of the Buckeyes. You can't you can't just what claim we... to be Greg Oden. I mean, you can. No one's stopping you. It's a free country. Although One I will have to down. be turning you in for identity theft, I think. <laughs> One week down, Jared, we have we have three weeks to go until the first game. Whew, almost there. Yep. Almost All right, let's there. get into it here. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well here, Jared. How are you today? Oh, you know, I don't really have any. I don't have any, have any complaints. I mean, that's a lie, but that's fine. I, I don't know. I don't know anyone. An honest. Uh, description of my life. No one cares. And I don't really care to share. Stop asking so many gosh darn personal questions, Kyle. Mind your own business. All right, fine. Fine. I'll just, we'll just talk about some Buckeye football instead. Al, that's a good idea. 24 days until the first game. So we are more, just a little more than three weeks from Ohio State heading on up to Minnesota to start the season off. But first, we're going to talk about week one of camp here. A lot to talk about with with players moving positions, um, names that's that's coming up front here. It's a lot to lot to cover here as week one ends. Some some news first, though. Um, I I know that it's not really news to anyone listening, but Kyle and I. Uh, it was it was merely rumor at the at the time we recorded our last episode. So uh, we are still going to talk about it. Yes, Kyle, uh, it is now official. It's officially official. Uh, Quinn Ewers graduating from high school early and joining the Buckeyes. Yes, he will be per what was dropped just moments ago before we started recording here on Sunday. Of course, everybody knows about this by the time this gets released here but he'll be joining the buckeyes this thursday if i pull up the calendar that is thursday august 12th yeah uh so then so then kabuto kabuto asks us a question pull up the calendar so my calendar is still up yeah august 12th is when he's coming to ohio state with the addition or excuse me um what date will quinn ewers lose his black stripe uh, I, I don't know. 
like soonish. Um, if he's coming in on the on the twelfth, I'm gonna say he loses it. I'm gonna say he loses it by the end of September. I was gonna say over under August twentieth. So that's over. So that's the following Friday. Over. Yeah, we're going over. It's fine. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Um Kyle, one of the what's things- now I gotta ask, because everyone's <laughs> asking it. And I think the answer is obvious. What's the chance that he starts a game this season? I will take the under of whatever you're saying. <laughs> Zero. I would take the under. <laughs> yeah, I just don't see it. Um, I, I think that if you look at CJ Stroud, Jack Miller, Kyle McCord, uh, they all have at least, at least, a half a year advantage on him in the case of CJ Str- uh, Stroud and Jack Miller. I almost said CJ Striller. Uh, in the case of CJ Stroud and Jack Miller, a year and a half advantage over him. I just, I don't see it. I, I think it would be, I think this team, if you look at the offensive line of this team and you look at so many elements of this team, it feels like, I, I it's, I, feels like kind of a throwaway to stick a kid who should be playing high school in it in it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me um now i think that he has a real good chance of starting next year but i don't know it's it, it does not feel super likely to me that we see him during legitimate playing time this year Speaking of legitimate playing time, uh, concept of the year, um, a lot of what we're going to talk about here was covered over at the Buckeye Scoop. So if you haven't already, be sure to head on over to the Buckeyescoop.com, be a member over there and get early access to a lot of just a lot of great information. Uh, Tony's over there. You got Kirk, you got Nevada, you got the whole gang over there getting getting you up to date news and um expertise of everything buckeye related this fall camp but the concept the concept of this year jared getting your best 11 on the field yeah uh, we, we we've talked about that number of times in the past uh, few years but it really seems ryan day is really trying to do that with a lot of the moves that we're starting to see um related to offensive player playing defense, defensive player playing offense, and potentially even some O-line changes? Shocking. I mean, legitimately shocking stuff, but it also makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so let's let's go ahead and start with the defensive side here. Start with the defensive side, and one of the names that's really come out of um, the first four practices, Cody Simon. Cody Simon yeah. really, really making a name for himself, taking advantage with um, – with Gant being injured in the spring camp. And now it just, it seems like that, <laughs> that he has to try to regain that middle linebacker position for how well Cody has done so far. Yeah. And, and again, if we're talking best 11, it, it feels like even if it's not middle linebacker, and even if it's not at the expense of Dallas Gant, it feels a whole lot like we're going to see Cody Simon on the field a lot this year. Maybe he one of the two of them might bump out to an outside linebacker position. I don't know. But, you know, speaking of the Buckeye scoop, you have Kirk Barton, one of the owners over there at the Buckeye scoop, who's essentially calling him an AJ Hawk clone. And those that that's a big, big compliment. That's a big compliment. You know, one all-american complimenting another all-american like that um or comparing him to an all-american like that um that's that's a huge compliment that's a huge comparison if we're looking for i don't know like with all due respect to pete warner who i liked a lot when was the last time ohio state had like a difference maker a difference maker playing at the linebacker position it's been a little while. It's been a while. Yeah. 
I mean, even if you could look at a guy like Raekwon McMillan, who, you know, again, no disrespect to Raekwon McMillan. I think a lot of the issues were about what was happening. He's been he's been a much better pro than he was than a Buckeye, which, again, is probably proof of the fact that the issues he, he wasn't maybe as much of a standout linebacker as he could or should have been probably because of the environment around him as opposed to him as a person. So just yeah, like, but, but unfortunately with Raekwon, he did, he is going to miss this entire season. I see. Yeah. Did tear his ACL in practice earlier this week too. Uh, by the way, nomad says Lee. Uh, no, we've had, um, I would say maybe Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker is definitely a difference maker at linebacker. Is he, he the was. last one? Maybe. Like, I, I, Hmm. He might be. And that's that's been a few years at this point. Yeah. Speaking of um, difference makers, one of the best recruits and finally joining Ohio State, JT Tui Malau. Early early reports coming in. Just he's he's as advertised, very athletic, big, um, has a devastating bull rush, as what which was described from um one source here. But one, one thing that kind of surprised me a little bit see, reading here was that he doesn't have a lot of pass rush moves. Right. But a devastating bull rush. So that kind of tells me, like, especially for the talent that we have with the defensive ends this year. Yeah. Maybe a three tech. We, we, talk, we talked about the return of the Rushman package. Maybe put Tui Malau right there at the three tech. And then you got you got your starting defensive ends beside him too you you plug in another big guy well I in the middle there too the problem with well if you're talking about at least as a true freshman which i think believe is what you're talking about moving him into three tech you're still he's still a backup at that point because he's not replacing haskell um ohio state i think is is pretty solid at three tech right now and you might say to yourself, well, Jared, bump Haskell down to nose tackle. He's a little, I, you know, I, I hesitate to call someone as big as Haskell Garrett small, but um, that's not the size of person necessarily that you want at your nose tackle, although it's certainly possible. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about maybe a revised Rushman package. And so you could definitely see JTT get on the field in in a package like that. Um, especially because at that point, yeah, if it's a if it's an obvious passing situation, then yeah, go ahead and move Haskell into nose tackle. Um, but I, I would say if Ohio State is struggling anywhere on the defensive line, and I'm not saying that they are, but if anywhere, my concern is probably more so with the nose tackle than it is with anywhere else. Although, you know, we're hearing a lot of good things about Vincent and Cage. Um, but again, if Vincent might be more of a, a three tech himself, although I think he would be better at nose tackle than Garrett would be, but still more of a three tech sort of guy. Um, but we're, we're hearing some good things about Cage. Um, you know, we're also hearing some good stuff about some of the younger guys, uh, although um, I don't, Michael Hall, I think, will be a great player for Ohio State. I don't see it yet. Uh Ty Leak Williams, we're hearing a lot of good things, and I think he'll have a good future at Ohio State. But I think I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, you all, you still have uh, Antoine Jackson available to you, and you know there's Ty Hamilton, another great defensive tackle. We'll maybe see you get into the rotation, but maybe not quite there yet. But definitely a guy who we'll we'll see a little bit more of now that he's in his second year. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the shiny freshman, I talked about JT. Let's talk about Jack Sawyer. Uh, Jack Sawyer really impressed us in the springtime here. Doesn't seem to be getting a lot of buzz, but I think that's just because of the other shiny freshman that's that's come up here. He, he came in in the spring. He's old news now. <laughs> I know. I know. But right. No. So one of the things you talk about, like. So all, already it's started with this like idea of like. OK, JTT or Jack Sawyer. I mean, they're going to be compared. That's it's unavoidable. They're going to be compared. You have two top 10 overall defensive ends in the country in the same class. 
they've come into sort of not not that it was organized, but they're but they're gonna play opposite each other, and that's a, a shoot I know was a big attraction for JTT to come in. And by the way, sorry, you know what? He does not like to be called JTT, so that's a habit we need to get out of Kyle. Um, the Tui Molau is coming in and is going to, you know, they want to play opposite of each other, which can limit how much, you know double teams they can take and stuff like that. So when you're talking about, there's going to be comparisons there. And one of the comparisons we're getting, as Kyle said, well, you know, Tui Molau has a great bull rush, but there's the, the, but then there's like a comma and a, but, but he doesn't have the good, as good a hand technique as Jack Sawyer. He doesn't have all of the great pass rushing moves as Jack Sawyer. And like, I would say, the spring you spend a spring with a coach as amazing as Larry Johnson. Yeah. You talk that, that he's like a hand fighting master hand fighting master is, is who Larry Johnson senior is. Give to him, give to him allow some time. Just give him some time. Um, yep. That spring, I think, made a huge difference, you know, in the Sawyer versus Tui Molau race. Yeah. So um, speaking of Jack Sawyer, uh, Duncan in our Discord uh, asked the question, which quarter do you think Jack Sawyer will record his first (laughs) career sack during week one's Minnesota game? Yeah, we're already... Already with the stupid expectations, and I love it. I do. Um, I, and I get that you're saying that with like a little little bit of tongue in cheek. Uh, I'll say this, that Jack Sawyer is amazing, and I think he'll get snaps. He's not going to start. So if we're talking about limiting his ability to get a sack in the first game, he's not going to start. He'll see the field. He'll see the field. He's not going to start. And also Minnesota has a good offensive line. I'm just, you got to keep that in mind. Minnesota has a very good offensive line. So it's not going to just be, you know, I I feel like we're going to have a little bit of a, man, we thought the defensive line was going to be so good, but we didn't get, we didn't get, we didn't get a sack on every single play. And what are we going to do? Like a bunch of week one overreactions. Minnesota has a good offensive line. So don't expect a sack every play, which I know is, what we want, but just deep breath with me now. Pre- I'm just getting ahead of that now. Yeah. All right. Let's let's move to the to, to actually the answer the question. I don't expect him to get a sack the first game. No, I don't think so either. Second maybe, game. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Second game. First it's game against okay. Oregon. I don't like their offensive line as much as I like Minnesota's offensive line. All right. Fair enough. All right. Um, moving to the defensive backs, um, probably the most scrutinized position from last year. A uh, lot, lot of buzz going around here. Um, I want to first answer uh, another question here from Duncan. How well does how well does Court Williams improve? By the way, who is, the, who, both that question and the question you're reading right now, that's from Duke Zach of the Buckeyes, not not Duncan. Uh, oh, sorry. Apologize. Um, how well does Court Williams improve? Who is who is the slot out of either Court, Ransom, or Hickman? How many picks does Seven get? And will Proctor be unstoppable force this season? So I want to say I want to start with the free safeties first here. Okay. Josh Proc- Josh Proctor getting getting a lot of praise. He's doing all the right things so far in camp here. I think that's your that's your solidified free safety position, right? Agreed. I, I would say so. All right. So then that brings up the, the cover safety then. Who's that going to be? Is it Craig Young? Is it Jensen Dunn? Is it Bryson Shaw? Court Williams, possibly. I know Court Williams is a lot of talk about that bullet position too. So who's going to be that cover? Who's it going to be that cover safety? So I want to say something. I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there. First off, I think it's Craig Young. I'm just going to first off. I think it's Craig Young. The the next thing we need to talk about, however, is. As Kyle said at the beginning of the episode, best 11. Best 11. I. 
do we almost need to stop thinking about positions? I mean, it's it's seriously getting to that point because like you're going to have four defensive linemen and your defensive linemen still have positions. All right. That that that's fine. We're still going to have two dedicated at least two dedicated corners on the field. So we can talk about those positions, right? Okay. Now we have so to have that's, that's there. So then you got the other five positions then. And then I think we still have to talk about having a dedicated deep safety. All right, a dedicated deep safety, that's Josh Proctor. So now we're down to four positions. Thank you, Kyle. Now, traditionally speaking, what are those four positions would be an additional safety and three linebackers. Those are your four guys, right? I feel like that what they're calling a cover safety, what in the past may have been called a strong safety, what we might be calling a bullet. I'm I'm not really sure. It's sort of becoming an amorphous blob of linebackers slash safeties slash bullets slash cover safeties slash like I. Or, may, or maybe it's depending on who they're playing and the down and yardage to go as well. And that's an excellent point, Kyle, because essentially if we're talking about having. So those of those four positions left, right? What if you have a safety on the field? So you have another deep safety and then you have a bullet and then you have two linebackers. That's pretty much a nickel position right there. Exactly. Or or what if you had a third corner in there instead? Now it is Mm -hmm. an actual nickel Mm -hmm. or. What if you had three dedicated linebackers and then you don't you only have one deep safety and then that bullet position is sort of a linebacker, sort of a corner, sort of a safety. And that might be what you do against the more run heavy, say, Minnesota team, right? That's 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 the uh, oh, whoever the Minnesota quarterback is going to be. Oh, I better get rid of that ball quickly <laughs> type of position. <laughs> exactly. So. There's a lot of we're seeing this idea of the safety, especially the down safety and the linebackers sort of merging into kind of an the the, the strong safety cover safety linebacker all sort of merging into one amorphous thing. And there will be dedicated linebackers, guys who aren't necessarily that sort of athletic, who will still be like dedicated linebackers. And like I said, you'll still have your deep safeties, your Josh Proctors of the world. But uh, there's becoming like this amorphous best 11 UFO style thing happening in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I really don't necessarily know how to label all of it, but I do think bottom line is uh, like best 11. And so Court Young's Craig Court Young. Oh boy, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try that sentence over again. Craig Young, Court Williams, Jansen Dunn, Brayson Shaw. You're going to see a lot of these guys playing cover corner or well cover safety, nickelback, linebacker, all sort of lumped into the same thing. Ronnie Hickman in there as well. Lathon Ransom in there as well. And by the way, DeMario, DeMario McCall is playing corner as well. And apparently it's looking pretty good. That's a. That's a six year position switch. Crazy, crazy. Speaking of defensive backs, before we move on, move on to another position here. Uh, our first black stripe of the fall camp here. Uh, first black ha- strip, not just of the fall camp, but of the fall enrollees. Yes. Uh, who here had Denzel Burke as their as their first option? Yeah, I mean, a lot of money would have gone on to him. Allow. <laughs> yep. Well, that's, it is. That's where a lot of that money would have gone. Yep. It is uh, Denzel Burke who who will be the first of the fall camp here to get their black stripe removed. Uh, he's, he was a, he was an early enrollee in January. Um, but oh, yeah, he was, he, he, yep. He that was is my fault. Yep. He was, um, but yeah, well, 
I expect many more, many more to come in yeah. week two. Yeah, yeah, many, yeah. many more. Well, actually, when I first saw Denzel Burke uh, got his black stripe removed, my first instinct was to jump over to the Ohio State Twitter page and just to see like who else. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of the times they'll release those tweets in batches. Yep. But no, it was just him. Yep, just him. So, but so Denzel Burke, right? So let's let's talk a little bit of corner. Obviously, for a, a lot of good reasons, Ohio State's pass defense as a whole took a lot of criticism last year. And yeah, of course. And talent, but in four months, months, people were like, well, is it talent or is it coaching? It's both. Like, it can't be one or the other. I mean, we, met, we mentioned, especially towards the end of last year, like, not as many practices and how many defensive backs were not there for Seven. Ohio State. Ohio State seven. lost seven defensive backs, and I'm including Cam Brown in that because he had a season-ending injury, lost seven defensive backs from the 2019 team to the 2020 team. Add that, so that's a huge talent loss. Some of those guys went to the NFL, and you were expecting to lose them. Some of those guys didn't go to the NFL. They transferred. They were arrested. You weren't expecting to lose those guys and you lost them. And that's especially devastating because like, you know, guys are going to go to the draft and you plan for that. The other stuff you have a hard time planning for. So you had this huge talent loss and then you have a new defensive coordinator and a new defensive backs coach. And yeah, is he a great? And by the way, he is a great defensive backs coach. And I think he will be a great defensive coordinator. He didn't have time with his players. But he didn't have the amount of time both with his corners and with his defense as a whole. And there was a lot of communication issues. So was it talent? Was it coaching? Yes. Yes, it was. It was all of those things. Yep. So when we look at this team, one, I think the coaching problem is going to fix itself. Coach Combs is going to have a full season with his guys. They redid some of the defensive coaching staff. Pretty minor tweaks, but, you know, they're getting to get a little bit more defense in on the back half of the defense. And I think that then we can look at the talent portion of that. I think the defense, I think the coaching side is going to be fine. Now we can look at the talent portion of that. And Kyle, I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, it's looking like from from what we're reading here. And from the coaches here, it looks like Ohio State's going to try to do a three-man cornerback rotation this year with seven banks, uh, mentioned Cameron Brown, as long as he stays healthy, and um, Ryan Watts as well. Now, three-man rotation, sounds good and all that, but I'd still feel comfortable if we get another name or two that they're fighting to get some playing time as well. Well, I have good news for you. I have another name or two for you. Tell us, Jared. Tell us this good news. <laughs> Legend Cavazos. Am I saying that right, Kyle? We have a pronunciation for him. Why don't you scroll up and look at that? <laughs> Legend. Got that. Cavazos. Yeah, I said that right. Legend Cavazos. Um, uh, another one. Uh, like. I'm going to try that sentence again. I'm going to back up. I'm going to try it again. Uh, much like with uh, Ryan Watts and then also Cameron Martinez. You have Legend Cavazos. Uh, you have a really good trio of these red shirt freshmen from the previous recruiting class. You know, uh, Tyreek, excuse me, not Tyreek Johnson, although I think that's another thing. Ty I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about Tyreek Johnson. I was about to talk about uh, uh, Jacqueline Johnson, but or Jacqueline, 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 that's there's an extra I in there. There you go. I knew it, I knew it was wrong when I said it. I had to look at it. Um, but yeah, Tyreek Johnson Jr. maybe hasn't quite lived up to his recruiting rankings to this point. Apparently is having an excellent offseason. So now he can enter the conversation. And mm -hmm. there's also been talks of him moving back to safety. Or into the so again, we're talking about how that slot corner is also becoming a safety, is also becoming a this, and also yeah, I think he's part of that conversation as well. 
Uh, but back to the young guys, uh, you have Ja'Kalen Johnson and Jordan Hancock joining, uh, both of them joining with the fall enrollees. I don't think either of them get a significant amount of playing time as true freshmen, but again, Ohio State had a severe lack of depth in the cornerback room and between last year's recruiting class and this year's recruiting class starting to get that depth back. So Kyle talks about seven banks, Cam Brown, legend Cavazos Add last year's freshman. Uh, yeah, like I said, I had last year's freshman in Cavazos, Martinez and Watts. Uh, Denzel Burke is one of this year's freshmen. We just talked about him losing his black stripe. Um, Unlike Hancock and Johnson, he did have a spring, so that's putting him slightly ahead right now. Yep. Then again, if we're talking about these second year players, Ransom and Hickman and Court Williams at the safety positions, safety slash bullet slash cover, whatever, the, the, this amorphous blob of players. They're going to see the field. So we're talking about a team that was devastated from a depth standpoint and couldn't withstand the loss of Cameron Brown from last year's team and other players from last year's team suddenly starting to look like they have some really nice depth and some really nice options. And one or two of these players are going to step up and become great options for Ohio State. And then on top of that, Ohio State's now playing with a five man rushman position to help get a little extra pressure on the quarterbacks. Loving what we're seeing out of the defense so far this year. Going to fix so, that pass uh, defense. We're doing yes. five man. We're doing a five man rushman package. We got sophomores and freshmen coming to the rescue and Kyle Cam Brown, Cam Brown, apparently really, really far ahead of where people were expecting him to be coming back from that Achilles injury. A lot of positive news. I'm pers personally still a bit cautious. You know, when we talk about a three-person cornerback rotation, I'm tend I'm tending to think it's like Banks and Watts with Brand uh, Brown coming in in relief at least during the first part of the season. Mm -hmm. As Brown continues to improve and get better and come back from that injury, I think we'll see Cam Brown eventually sort of take that position back over. Yeah, so what, one of the things, and totally, we totally missed this one here, that's going to hurt that defensive rotation is Tyler Friday as well. He's out for, going to be out for most of the season. I'm, I'm anticipating all the season here. Probably. Uh, so that, that, is a, that is a slight blow. Um, I'm not going to say that it's, it's a, uh, it doesn't affect or it's a big blow, but it's, it's, a, it's a slight blow to Ohio State's rotation here. That's at the defensive end position, but... Ohio State is luckily incredibly deep at the defensive end position. I mean, yep. when you have Tuimo uh, Lau and Sawyer, who I just don't expect to start, that says something, right? Yeah. You have Zach uh -huh. Harrison and Tyreek Smith, who are your week one starters. And oh, by the way, Jean Baptiste, Noah Potter. We don't talk about Henry Young a lot but he's still a very good player. He's a red shirt freshman as well. Again, we're talking about last year's class becoming red shirt freshmen and sophomores and how that's affecting everything. It's going to be okay. Like I, you know, I, I, with all due respect to Tyler Friday, they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Before we go into the offense, let's go in here. It's, we're going to go ahead and take a break here and hear from our sponsors. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Iron Bean Coffee Company again. Uh, let's see. Kyle, I feel like maybe I haven't talked about the dark roast in a while, or maybe some of these flavored coffees. I could talk about some of these flavored coffees. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about the Irish cream, the Dylan's Grog. Let's talk about those two. Let's spend some time and just talk about those two. So you have the Irish cream coffee. Um, it's a flavor concoction reminiscent of Irish whiskey, coffee cream, uh, all in all, it's sort of incorporated into this one coffee. Uh, it's remarkably mellow, creamy, warming mixture, uh, greatly enhanced by the flavors of our premium roasted coffee. And when I say hour, that's because I was reading that straight from the site. 
<laughs> uh, like most of the iron bean coffees, or all of the iron bean coffees, it, uh, the beans are USDA, USDA certified organic and fair trade certified. Um, again, it's an Irish cream. Uh, it's in a 12 ounce bag, calorie free, sugar free, guilt free, uh, guilt free, both from a nutritional standpoint and a moral standpoint. Again, fair trade certified and organic. Uh, and then let's see, there's the Dylan's grog, um, combines the flavors of butterscotch rum and just a hint of vanilla, um, roasted daily, like any of their premium coffees. Um, again, fair trade certified USDA organic. Uh, it's that classic Highlander grog. I think a lot of premium coffee companies make a, uh, some sort of grog. Um, I, I know a lot of people really love it. This one, next level. Because everything Iron Bean Coffee Company does is next level. And even if you don't want a flavored coffee, or even if you want to go and look at some of their other flavored coffees, including their uh, murder brand of coffees, you can go and check those out over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mekity and Barbecue Company. Uh, summer is starting to wrap up and we're starting to get into football season here. And you know what that means? Time to keep that girl going during these Saturday Buckeye football weekends. Buckeye weekends. There you go. <laughs> um, so, so if you're not sure what season to get, the Mad Kenny has got you covered with their box sets. They got to just send it. I call it their, their um, all around uh, spices there. It does everything you need with them. The S&P bud, the snoring heat, the Cajun, and the smoked. Uh, you can go with the sweet heat uh, box set. Four Horsemen, Discord, Two Border, and the Old Fashioned gets you that sweet and heat from, from those spices. Or the Whole Hog, which is one of each of the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the And To save even more, you can use that promo code SLUKCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order mad kenny barbecue company where he has your butt covered god before we get into the offense i feel like i must talk about this rushman package for a, just a tad okay five defensive linemen what you do is you move haskell garrett who you should just never take off of the field as long as he's uh feeling properly oxygenated so you put him right over top of the center right now you can then take Two of your bigger defensive ends, my assumption would be probably Tui Molau and um, and and Tyreek Smith. You're probably going to put them on the outside shoulder of the guards, maybe straight up on the guards, maybe outside shoulder of the guards. And then you probably take Zach Harrison and Jack Sawyer, maybe put them out in a wide nine. And you're just going to spread that defense all the way the hell, that offensive line rather, all the way the hell out. Because essentially what you're then forcing, what so you're forcing no double teams unless it's coming from a running back or a tight end. So then you're forcing the other team to either have no double teams or take one of their pass catchers and take them out of the, out of the route scheme advantage. Then what you're also doing, you're forcing offensive guards who aren't used to working in space. That's why they're guards and not tackles, because they're not good at working in space. And you force them to play offensive tackle against the defensive end. Because the other defensive ends are spreading the offensive tackles so far out that you're now putting those guards on an island and you're now much closer to the quarterback that's really going to open up some opportunities for those interior defensive ends to go up against guys who aren't used to playing in space, playing in space and having a much shorter path to the quarterback. Because once again, the guard is closer to the quarterback. Now, the problem you might have with this is with an athletic quarterback and how do you, if you, if you spread everything out too much, an athletic quarterback is going to probably hurt you in space. So you might have to move it in a tad, but if you get a stationary quarterback, good luck, buddy. The one downside with that too, not only with an athletic quarterback uh, position, but also like, delayed plays draw plays as well so that's yeah. that's another thing you got to keep an eye out 
with that kind of position. Right. And I mean, you can still run stunts out of that. You can still do inside pinches if you're expecting a draw play, something like that. So you're not always just going out the entire time. In fact, you don't want to do that. You want to mix it up. But yes, I I agreed. All right. Let's move to the offensive side here, Jared. A lot of buzz, a lot of buzz going to the slobs in week one of practice here. And what I mean by a lot of tension, I mean, Munford, not your starting left tackle? Shocking. It's it's honestly shocking, but apparently it's possible. It's maybe not even possible. It almost again, we're talking best eleven. This is this Yep. And, and, and that's where about, and that's where that's all this that's where all of this is coming from is getting your best eleven, which your best five slobs here. NPF, Munford, Johnson, Jones, Miller trying to get those five on the field at the same time. And what you got here is a potential of having your, your all American caliber left tackle, not playing a tackle position here. So you could have, you could potentially see something here. Like you could have NPF as your starting left tackle. And then you could put probably Johnson, uh, Paris Johnson right next to him. And then you get have Dewan Jones out on the right tackle, put Munford right next to Jones there. And you have Harry Miller in the middle. Is that how they're doing it? I thought they were moving. It's it's a little it's a little mix here. It's I'm pretty it, sure they're it, moving it, guard into left it, guard. It could be. Yeah, you could see Munford probably into the left guard as well, protecting the blind side of your freshman slash redshirt freshman quarterback there. So, yeah, so, so you could really just pile up that left side and you just have that wall for that blind for the blind side of your quarterback. Yeah. Cause I think you probably want to keep, you probably want to keep Paris Johnson over on the right. So essentially what you're, so for a long time, like all off season, I think we've done two different depth chart specials to this point. And in both of them, we said, well, we know exactly what's happening at left tackle center, right guard and right tackle. We know exactly what's happening. It's these guys. Left guard is going to be a battle, but we'll figure that out. Well, here comes the curveball. So essentially what you do, what they're doing is if you just picture it, you got left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. You take NPF, you move him over to left tackle, you bump Thayer from left tackle into left guard. You bring Dwan Jones, who like almost transferred when when he heard Thayer Munford was returning. He saw his chances of playing tackle this year go up in smoke and almost transferred is it, actually a huge win for Ohio State to keep him. Um, but he he now gets to play right tackle. Paris Johnson, who is like all American tackle in waiting, playing right guard. And then, of course, we have Miller at center, right? That that hasn't changed. But essentially what you now have is your starting, or excuse me, your backup left tackle and left and right tackle now playing at the guard position. So should anything happen to NPF or Dwan Jones, the guy to their left bounces out, takes over their spot at tackle, and you have someone like Enoch Vamahi or... Uh, any other number of really talented guards that they currently have on the team. Uh, Josh Fryer uh, has been getting a lot of positive uh, press lately. Any number of guys could Matt Jones could essentially then take over one of the guard positions. So again, getting your best 11 on the field there. And that's those what you five, do. And that's those five that we mentioned there are your five. I mean, center, you got to have a center. So it's just, Right. It, it's Harry Miller there in the center. But then you got to find your other four guard slash tackles, get your best four on the field there. And if that means moving your all American candidate, Mumford, in a spot to the guard, man, arguably the best offensive line in the country right here. Inarguably. In our, it was, it was inarguable when it was lining up the way we thought it was going to line up, which is with a question mark at left guard. You take away that question mark. And by the way, can let's just all take a moment real quick. 
if this actually happens, and it sounds like it might, can we all just like a, we just have a Thayer Munford appreciation moment here? That he's just going to like, yeah, I'll go play left guard. I know I'm a two year starting preseason All American left tackle. I know. I'll, I'll play left guard. It's fine. Yeah. Well, you realize how much, Kyle, you realize how much you, less money, less money a left tackle makes as opposed to a guard in the NFL? It's a lot less. Now, maybe in the back of his head, because he was a guy who almost went to the NFL last year, he saw the, you know, he submitted his paperwork, he got the feedback from the NFL scouts. Maybe there's something in there in that feedback that he got where maybe the NFL is telling him that they see him as a guard. Maybe, and I, I'm speculating now, this is pure speculation on my part. Maybe the NFL guys don't see him projecting to tackle at the NFL level. Maybe that's yep. part of the motivation behind this. I don't know. Maybe he saw the writing on the wall and, and he sees himself as an NFL guard anyway. Yeah. Another appreciation to Mumford as he, as well as uh, three other football players, earned their diplomas today, Jared. Excellent. And I have to imagine when the captains are named that he's among them. I, I just don't see how that's possible yeah. that he's not. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. Um, I think that's enough for the slobs for today. I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot more about them in the coming weeks here. Especially um, if we get some confirmation of this offensive line move. Maybe this Tuesday. Is we. We, we may get some more uh, quite well. I know Tony and the gang are going to uh, be able to talk to the coaches. I know, I think they're talking to Ryan day on Monday. They're going to be talking to about the offensive line on Tuesday. So maybe we'll get some answers quite or get some questions answered on Tuesday. All right, let's, let's move on to um, the, I was gonna make. I was gonna try to make a joke, but I'm not going to here. Um, the tight end, the tight end position here. Uh, Kate, Cade Stover. Yeah, really, really impressed. Being really impressed um, at the tight end position here, and even one comment here about maybe we start two tight ends. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 that sounds yeah. great. It sounds <laughs> great. But you realize how many wide receivers run this team right now? How many yep. five star wide receivers? Uh, with all due respect to Cade Stover, no. Um, but you know, getting a ceremonial co-starter, even if it's purely ceremonial, getting that ceremonial co-starter on the depth chart would be enormous. Mm -hmm. But so like a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how Ohio state lost a commitment, uh, from a tight end. Um, and in case this has not got back to you and apologies, if this, uh, comes across as rude, that was not that player's decision. That was Ohio state's call. I just recruiting is a big boy sport and it sucks sometimes. Um, but that, that was not Ohio state's or excuse me. That was not his call that, that was encouraged by Ohio state. So a lot of, so the question, then you lose a tight end in a recruiting and you're like, Oh, who are they going to go to replace them? Who are they going to go to replace them? I don't think they are. I don't think they're going to attempt to replace him. Cade Stover, a true sophomore all of a sudden looking really good as a tight end. Is he the pass catcher that Jeremy Ruckert is? No, no, he is not. But apparently he's good enough as a pass catcher. Good hands, does not have the route running abilities as, as Jeremy Ruckert does. But let's, let's face some facts. Ohio State doesn't throw their tight ends hardly ever anyway. But mm -hmm. apparently a devastating blocker and all around athlete at the tight end position. Joe Royer, Another second year tight end, apparently doing pretty good. And then all of a sudden, just like, and I know that he's a senior and I know that he's a walk on, but a lot of people are talking about Mitch Rossi as a guy who's, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correct. All of a sudden coming out as a name that people are talking about. Just like, just like Thea Munford, Jeremy Ruckert, one of those four also to get his degree, Jared. Excellent. Also a decent. <laughs> Decent chance for Cap. There's so there's so many. It's amazing that he would like be a maybe, but yeah. And I'll, I'll just kind of finish up. The other two are Master Teague and Marcus Williamson as well. There you go. But yeah, no, I agree. Like we talk about getting your eleven best on the field. 
yeah, I, I'd love to love to see like you, you see somebody trend, transitioning over to the tight end position. They're doing really well, getting all this name recognition. But like what Jared said, you got all these studs over at wide receiver. Yeah. You got we're going to get to the running back here as well, and you got the quarterback position here. There's just there's only eleven spots that he can put on at once, and that's that's just the the bad part about having so much talent on this team here is just that you can only put 11 on at once here <laughs> champagne problems yes uh, uh so running backs kind of moving from the tight end to the running backs here jared a lot, a lot of people i'm I'm just going to say are over over analyzing that mine williams taking the first snaps here and so everybody's talking about like oh mine williams is he is he over, is he the one over Master Teague? What about um, about what about Trey Hundo? Uh, <laughs> um, what about all the other? <laughs> How dare you? There was one Trey Hundo, and he's in the NFL now. <laughs> Henderson can't have it. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, Henderson. The hype around Henderson is insane right now, and that's not mm-hmm. me saying that it's inaccurate. And that's not me saying that it's not deserved. I'm just saying the hype's insane. Uh, I'm not, again, it could be totally legitimate and probably is totally legitimate. And I do think he ends up starting by the end of the year. Does he start week one? I still have my money on no, but by, but I'm getting, I'm, <laughs> if I place that bet, I'm starting to get nervous about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, th- and those who didn't realize, uh, Nomad asks, how long do you see uh, Henderson wearing number 32? So Henderson's wearing number 32 as a freshman. And you know what, Nomad? I hope he always wears that. I hope he doesn't change to like a single digit. Give me that 32 as long as he's a Buckeye. Kyle, why do you like 32 so much? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Can people see that? Can people actually see that? Maybe, maybe if you zoom in a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot, a lot of hot, a lot of hot. Honestly, he might stick with it. Yeah. Um, you don't know he's going single digit nomad. Maybe he likes having an NFL style number. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but Eddie, yeah, mine Eddie, Williams, Eddie's though. stuck I with his 27. You don't know. Um, going, back to, going, going back to mine Williams, though. He is getting a lot of the carries, though. Uh, so that does beg the question, like, is is Master Teague back healthy again? Because I know he missed spring camp. Um, I know there, there's still a lot of question marks regarding Master Teague here. And with with Henderson as well, too, there's that running back position is kind of just I, I think this is just a up in the air position right now. So there's two different ways of looking at. Master Teague not necessarily reportedly, allegedly getting maybe a ton of carries. Uh, And again, like we know what Ohio State wants us to know. Like, I just want to say that. People are like, oh, Mayan Williams took the first carry at practice at the first practice. Okay, but like Ohio State knew, Ohio State knew that the press was there and watching. They, they knew that. And I hate to break it to you. A lot of this news that breaks out of camp. I, Ohio State is knowingly, selectively handing that information over. We know what Ohio State wants us to know. Nothing more, nothing less. We know exactly what Ohio State wants us to know. So with that in mind, what do we know? about Master Teague. We know that he is a junior who has had a lot of snaps, a lot of carries, and is coming off of an injury. We also know that there's a redshirt freshman, a true freshman, and another true freshman who are having amazing camps. So you could view this in one of two ways. You could view this as Teague knows what he's doing. He's been around. He's a high, he's a high snap guy. He's a high carry guy. There's no reason to rush him back. 
let him rest, let him heal. There's no reason to rush him back in. He's a junior. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He knows the offense. Everything's fine. Just we're going to ease him back in. And you shouldn't read into this. The other thing you could on the other side of that extreme. Mayan Williams might be taking over and. We might also be seeing Henderson eventually take over as Kyle just told us, Master T graduated. And you you could, if you really, really wanted to start looking at Master Teague as someone who maybe has a foot out of the door. And again, I'm not saying that's what's happening. I gave you one extreme where it means nothing. And now I'm giving you the other extreme where it means everything. And the truth almost always somewhere in between the two extremes. Yep. That okay. That is what I was alluding to, gangland. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel like. Oh, you know, it's either Boston College or Cincinnati. That's 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 where all the Ohio State guys go. Or Rutgers or Rutgers. But yeah, I'm just I'm giving you the two extreme. There's no such thing as a fullback anymore. I hate to break it to you. Not 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 on this team. No, hardly anywhere. Even the NFL at this point, it's it's rare. Yeah. A tight uh, end. You want a five eleven tight end? Is that what you want? You miss you missed our tight end spiel here. So you're gonna you're gonna have to go back and listen to us talking like five plus minutes about the tight end there. So yeah. So bottom uh, line is there's two different extreme ways of reading that. I gave you the two extreme ways of reading that. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Yep. All right. Uh let's let's go ahead and end the episode here, Jared, with some other questions that we didn't get to as well. This one this one's really interesting because um with uh with the Olympics ending here, uh, uh, Duncan, quick, uh, can I give it, can I give an update on the wide receivers? Uh, they're good. good. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Duncan asked, um, Duncan's dad wants to know why Ohio State isn't going to Jamaica to recruit speed. We go to Australia for kickers because in Australia, they kick an oblong thing that looks a lot like a football. And even though it's not exactly their sport, the punting aspect. Of, so they, they have proper experience uh, in Jamaica. They don't. <laughs> you you got to do, put, more, you have to, you gotta you have do to put, more than run fast in football. You got to put pads on as well. Yeah, it's it's yeah, you it's it's not a. It's, you can't just be fast and play football. I mean, if that was the case, you could at least look at American sprinters. There, there, there's a reason why they always say, well, he's track fast. And then, and then there's Ted Ginn fast. <laughs> With all due respect, Nomad, Al Davis is dead. Um, let's see. Another question here. So he's not disappearing to anything. Let's see. Um Florida Buckeye has a weather question for all of you people who are constantly asking us to talk about weather here. Okay. Looking at you, Nomad. Uh, What is your prediction for uh, major storm hurricane, like storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes this year? Uh, Named storms. Yep. Named storms, hurricanes, major hurricanes. Kyle, you're you're the one. I mean, I know North Carolina isn't. It's, it's, it's a, it's, would you call it hurricane country? Like hurricane adjacent? Depends on, the, depends on the, depends on the year. Depends yeah. on the year. Um, he says here, his is 20 major or 20 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. Uh, I think I'll go a little bit lower. I think I'll go like 17, five and four. Okay. So you went under, under, over. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I'll go. I'll go. I'll, I'll agree with Major Storms three. So, yeah, I'll go five under under push. Yes, there you go. Yep. All right. Um, I think we got a question from everybody else who's asked here. We've got Nomad with a few. We got Kabuto. Uh, I really Duke. like this Kabuto question. Um, is the next quarterback to beat Ohio State currently on uh, beat Ohio State in Big Ten play? currently on the roster. Ooh. 
Yeah. Oof. So the question here is, is the next Big Ten quarterback to beat Ohio State currently on Ohio State's roster? It's a great question. I don't yeah. it's impossible to answer. But I really like the question. Simply because for, there's four amazing, at least as of, you know, upcoming Thursday. Four amazing quarterbacks. Yep. Which, by the way, does not even take into account J.P. Adondre, a guy who I understand why people are forgetting about. Um, a preferred walk-on uh, who's very good. He's only a junior. Uh, he, he could potentially leave. I'm just saying. He seems like the perfect type of guy who would end up at a lower Big Ten school and, and do well. Um Andrade. I don't know how I said it the first time, but it's Andrade. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Michigan is down that bad gangland. Mm. Oh, oh, Nomad. Sorry, going back weather real quick. Hey, Nomad, there's some activity out, out east here, so we may see some activity in the next week out in the ocean. Yeah, no, Nomad's no longer in hurricane. Co- he was also in like weirdly adjacent hurricane country, much like you, but different. But he's not there anymore. He's he's All right. he's, he's somewhere different now. But I'm just McCord, Miller, Stroud, Ewers. Could any of those guys end up on a Big Ten team and end up defeating Ohio State? I mean, we almost had it with Burrow. Had Ohio State beat Clemson in 2019. Again, that wouldn't have been a, a Big Ten game. Um, then Ohio State, I think, ends up losing to that LSU team because they were just devastating. It's, yeah. it's I'll go I'll go with no I'll go with no just then transferring to another Big Ten team. It's po- why not? It's, it's possible. possible. I just I, I'm going to say I, to answer the question. I'm going to say no. It's it feels unlikely, but it's still a fascinating question. It is. Yeah. All right. That is the end of today's episode, Jared, and a lot more to talk about next week as we talk about week two, and we're inching closer to. That Thursday game against Minnesota. Getting closer. What's how many days, Kyle? How many days? Still, well, I want you when I want this you is released on when this is released on Monday, it'll be 24 days. Ah, that's right. I want you to go just steal all of Tom Moore's thunder and tell us exactly how many days. We we love you, Tom. Um <laughs> you, you so you still know exactly how many days until the Michigan game. So <laughs> all right, that's the end of the episode. I uh, want to encourage everyone to uh, go to the sloopcast.com and follow all of those links to all of our uh, different things, our different t-shirt stores. We have two of them. This is from our 7071 store right here. This is available in a bunch of different colors. Um, Kyle's wearing something from our sloopcast store right now. That's uh that's a parody of a proper soccer shield. I said it. <laughs> and, uh, you can find all of our social medias on there. You can find, you can find a lot of crap. I don't know. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, you can just, just go find all of the things. I, I don't, Kyle, I'm done talking. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm done listening to me right now. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A couple of things here. Um, Bobby Bowden, the oh, long time yeah. Florida state uh, coach passed away. We found out on Sunday, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't Florida State fans, but he he meant a lot to the college football um, universe there. Um, yeah, it's it's always sad to see a, a legend coach uh, pass away. Almost always. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the Olympics finally end, Jared, after seventeen days, something like that, two and a half weeks of um, of medals being passed around. United States for the I think it's like sixth year, sixth summer Olympic in a row have led in total medal counts. Not only that, but they also surpassed China in the gold counts at the very end as well. Well, there you go. I tell you, I really I really enjoyed watching those uh those finals of the track and track and field uh, competitions, whether it's the whether it's the hurdles to the relays to the shot put, it was 
So it was very enjoyable for me. I know you're a big track nerd like that. <laughs> all right. That's all I got. All right. That's all Kyle has. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the Sonder Bombs. Uh, you can check them out on YouTube and Bandcamp and any other place where you can find music. Kyle, your camera went super out of focus for some reason. I don't, it's just bugging me, and I, I just I can't. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it was so upsetting for me, but it was. Uh, yeah, once again, this is be the Sonder Bombs. Uh, be sure to check the show notes uh, for links and the name of the song. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local music. That's right. That's right, everyone. I just told you to drink local music. That's a thing I just said. I want to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Sonderbombs. That bass got me hammered her gangland. That's what happens when you drink too much local music, my man. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for I'm ready for some more football, Jared. Yeah, I'm getting I'm I'm starting to that, get itchy. That, starting to get itchy. That, it, that itch is there. That itch is there. Can't wait. Who who is that Jets player who said that? I forget his name. Yeah, he played for the Ravens. Um, anyone? Anyone down in the chat want to help us out on that one? He was super excited to play the Steelers because he was a, a Ravens player, even though he was playing for the Jets at the time. Bart Scott. I would I just I would never have. Bless you. Yep. Bart Scott can't wait. Jets interview. Yep. All right. That's enough talk about Jets that we ever should talk about. So let's end, let's end today's episode. I once again would like to thank the Sonderbombs for ending today's show, and I'd once again like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Let's see. Lauren, I mentioned the uh, the Murder Coffee Company, uh, which is a offshoot, a sub, a re... I don't, I don't know what the exact terminology here is, uh, but they have some additional flavored coffees under their Murder Coffee brand. Brand. That would have been the word to use. Uh, there's the Serial Killer. Uh, which is a vanilla butter cream coffee. The stay awake, which is uh, just, it's not, this one's not flavored. It's just uh, intensely caffeinated. Um, there's the bloodbath, which is a red velvet cake flavor. Uh, the turning blue, which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble. And the soulless, which is a ginger, ginger snap coffee. Uh, although that one is currently sold out. That one, Kyle, is currently sold out. So uh, you might want to keep an eye open for the next time that one comes back into back into play. Uh, let's see. There's also the mom's carrot cake, which is an iron bean coffee. Uh, then there's the mint chocolate chip. That's another uh, iron bean. There's the intense blueberry, which you can probably guess what that one's flavored like. And if we're talking about the flavored coffees, never, ever, ever forget about the unicorn because it's it's just an adventure in a bag. What kind of flavor is it? You don't know till you try it. It's going to and you go and you get it again. It's going to be something different the next time. Potentially, you just never know. That's the adventure of it. And if it's really good and you really like it, make sure to let them know because it might end up becoming a regular coffee that they sell uh, and you can rebuy whenever you want. So if, if you really like your unicorn, if you really like what you got, let them know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it, that's all, uh, let's see, barrel aged. Do they currently have any of those and not in stock? Uh, they only have those every once in a while, you guys. So make sure to keep an eye out for those as well. 
And then there's the exotics. That's right. There's a whole other one. Um, but you know what? We're out of time. So you're just going to have to read those for yourself. And you can do so at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to by our good friends over at the Macadine Barbecue Company. Mentioned some of the great seasonings, the box sets here. Um, did you know that the Mad Canadian has a food truck? Yes, he he. you can pick out any of his great seasonings and some of the meats he puts out in his food truck. You can find out where he's heading out to next over at social media sites on Facebook. Just search the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company or on Twitter, uh, TMCBBQ. On, on Twitter as well. He puts out on there where he is heading to. Uh, last weekend, he was over at the Carry Fist Fest. I've heard great things at it um, really well. A lot of showings. Um, yeah. Um, if you're not sure or if you want some, if you want some great food, check, check out his um, social media sites to check out where he and his food truck are heading to next. And if you want any of those great seasons he puts on, check out his site, Mad Kitty Barbecue. MadCanadianBBQ.com and be sure to use that promo code SLUTCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered.